Hello, I'm Toy Cat, and welcome back to the second channel video. So, a lot of people have been asking what my favorite political party is recently, and you know what? I have to be honest with you, it's probably the Hungarian Two Tailed Dog Party. I've never found an ideology I agree with as much as these guys right here with their great dog that has two tails. And uh, to explain this, how about I show you one of their policy positions? Um, and assuming you don't read Hungarian, here's the English version of it. They want a smaller Hungary. This party advocates for making Hungary smaller by giving land uh, to its various surrounding countries because they are getting confused by the stupid dialects. Uh, uh, are people fed up of traveling hours within their own country just to get from one place to another? You don't remember so many needless county capital names, do you? Don't give a damn about County Piranha, do you? Let's detach unnecessary regions along the border. And so obviously this is a joke position. It's a really fun joke position though too, right? Like, you know what? Most countries have so much land that like, does it really give much value? Does it need to be there? Probably not. No, let's give it to our surrounding neighbors. Let's get a smaller, better country and only the two-tailed dog party uh, can actually say that. Uh, but interestingly, even though it's clearly a joke party, I mean, the, if, if you look at their ideology, it's anti-anti-immigration and mandatory siesta, apparently. Um, but interestingly, even though they're clearly a joke party, they still managed to get just under 2% of the votes in the National Assembly. They are the seventh largest party there. And even crazier, in the EU election, they got 2.62% of the vote, which maybe says more about how much of a joke EU elections are than it does about this party. But still, it's a very interesting uh, thing to look at. They're like, oh yeah, Hungary has a weird, wacky party that actually does quite well. And interesting, you know, whenever weird parties come up, I always have to be like, well, you know, being from the UK, hate to flex on everyone, but we we do democracy. You know, this is what real democracy looks like. It's your prime minister being sworn in right next to Lord Buckethead and is that someone in an Elmo suit? <laughs> yes, that is someone in an Elmo suit. Well, that's a fun one-off coincidence, except actually, here is a former prime minister Theresa May. Um, that Here is former prime minister Theresa May as you can see, she's standing right there, about to be elected in her Maidenhead constituency. And what's that? There's Lord Buckethead. Uh, there's <laughs> a man with a giant rosette. And there is, look at that. Oh, it's it's Elmo again. And you know what? That's probably just two Prime Ministers. Nah, here is Elmo <laughs> next to <laughs> former Prime Minister David Cameron as well. As you can see, he discriminates not based on the Prime Minister. He just wants to run as Elmo, regardless of the conditions. And it's super interesting because I actually had never looked into him before making this video. Apparently his name is Bob Bobby Smith, and he's a father's rights activist. I really don't see the link between dressing up as Elmo and running <laughs> for candidacy um, and, uh, you know, father's rights, but apparently Bobby Smith does. And if you look through what he's done, it's it's really interesting because he started by, you know, yelling on a, uh, you know, <laughs> he, he, he camped outside someone's home and then used a megaphone to speak to people. Then if we go uh, you know further into this, it's like, okay, so he carried out some protests. Those sound good. Oh, he went to the Labour Pink Bus campaign. Okay, that's that's fine. Okay, so he also, it looks like he uh, he climbed onto Westminster Abbey and unfurled banners to highlight father's rights. Okay, he climbed onto the roof of the home of Chris Grayling, leader of the House of Commons. I mean, climbing on homes, that's a good way to raise awareness for father's rights. And then also, you know, this was all in the same year. For the third time in a year, he climbed onto the roof of the Queen's Gallery at Buckingham Palace. And uh, yeah, basically, by climbing on the roofs of all these buildings, one, clearly he's got some sick bouldering skills, but two, he is uh, advocating for father's rights. Personally, I feel like, you know what, uh, sucks that he lost his children and I hope, uh, you know, I, I'd say I hope that gets better, but like, if if his beliefs are that like, oh yeah, the way you the way you get them back is you dress up as Elmo and you climb buildings, it's like, ooh, maybe, maybe something did happen for the better there, right? Anyway, so the other interesting thing in these pictures, uh, besides like, oh, isn't it wacky, uh, the man wearing, <laughs> again, uh, Lord Buckethead. Uh, but also, it's this man wearing the giant rosette over here. This is uh, Lord Such, if I'm not mistaken, the leader of the Monster Raving Looney Party. This is their website. They're an active party and have been for a very long time in the UK. And allow me to show you some of their delightful figures who run. Again, so this is Howling Lord Hope. <laughs> he's, oh wait, Lord Such is dead. So he's the replacement for that guy. There's the Jersey Flyer. Look how enthusiastic he looks. Um, there's Baron von Thunderclap <laughs> with a burn. Basically, you know, there are a lot of ridiculous people and uh, they do ridiculous things. And I, I, I decided to look at their manifesto because they did release one in 2020. And here is the Corona slash Brexit updated version. So once in government, anyone applying for a seven figure salary position with the World Health Organization or as, the, or as government health advisors will have to answer 15 correct questions on who wants to be a millionaire. 
Very funny. 10 out of 10. Good job. In Brexit trade deals, Germany will be required to pay for treatment of measles, and Spain will be required to pay for cases of Spanish flu. The French will pay for all accidents resulting from kissing and broken hearts and uh, broken letters, and the Dutch will split all future expenses 50-50. <laughs> Um, we will place in law measures to stop panic buying as COVID-19 restrictions take hold. Shoppers will be only permitted to buy one panic per person. <laughs> it is evident that the 10 p.m. Pub, pub, pub curfew is not working. We propose that pubs ask people to leave in alphabetical order. Shamefully, Lord Such has never been allowed to take his place in the House of Lords. Neither were these people will end this discrimination against musicians. Uh, to unite the population, we will surround the UK with a large cardboard box so people can be both in slash out of the EU. This is known as Schrodinger's Brexit. High quality. To get more children reading, fish and chips will once again be wrapped in newspapers. Anyway, you know, it's very, it's a very fun thing, right? It's, it's, it's enjoyable. The monster raving loony party. Aren't they a lot of fun? Yes, they are a lot of fun. Uh, but they're not the only party that are wacky in Europe. And something, uh, you know, I decided to look into was, uh, you know, satirical parties around the world. And I found Lemon Party and I was like, yes, what a funny name for a party. I'd love to vote for the Lemon Party because jokes. But this is a party from 1987. They disbanded in 1998. The Lemon Party was before its time. They didn't even... Actually, wait. What if, like, the Lemon... Not be confused of Lemon Party, by the way. <laughs> uh, what if that they probably did have the .org domain extension, right? What if like the reason that that started is something to do with them? I'm just saying I could see it. Anyway, so the Lemon Party is a Canadian uh, party that uh, had a small <laughs> that uh, that they have a big tent political position. And they have some pretty key policies, such as restructuring Canada's economy to be centered on lemon production, supporting global warming so lemons can be grown in Canada, abolishing Toronto, I mean, who doesn't want to do that, repealing the law of gravity, and merging the Great Lakes. I mean, isn't it a bit annoying how close they are together, but not being merged? I, I agree with the lemon party here. But while we're mentioning ridiculous politics in Europe, something we have to mention, like, we literally have to mention them, is this... Servant of the People. This is a TV show um, in Ukraine that ran in October of 2015. It tells the story of uh, Volodymyr Zelensky, a high school teacher in his 30s who unexpectedly wins election to the presidency of Ukraine after a viral video um, talking about government corruption. And uh, the interesting thing about this, like this, this show that did exist and was very popular in Ukraine, became so popular in Ukraine Again, an amount of popular you might not believe because this this Volodymyr Zelensky, uh, this actor from a TV show who was, in fact, qualified as a teacher, um, decided to run for president. And not only did he run for president, but he won. And not only did he win, he won in a 73 to 24% landslide. This 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 TV show about the, the, the teacher that, you know, became president because of, you know, media on the internet became, but was it was actually the inspiration for the very same teacher in that TV show using the power of media to become, how does that, how does that really happen? How is this a real thing that I'm talking about right here? Also interesting is when you look at the Ukraine election map and they've got all these election districts, as you can see, mostly won by uh, the Green Party. And then they've got one district that covers the rest of the world. And that was won by the Red Party. Yay, Vladimir Zelensky. Outside Ukraine, where people aren't watching the TV, they don't vote for you. But as you can see inside of it, it's it's just it's just such a bizarre one to me that like, yep, this happened. And also he ran his party as servant of the. It you know it just <laughs> everything about this is just absurd, right? Um, and he is in fact president right now. Do you wanna do you wanna read about him? What he's doing? He's doing a bunch of uh, you know fun things these days. And I just. It, I, how is this happening? I don't know. But one of the cool things you can do if you if you like these parties and you want to read about more of them, there is a really interesting uh, you know, concept on Wikipedia. Again, Wikipedia has a list of almost any interesting concept that you can just scroll through. Do you want to read about the deadly serious party? The Imperial British Conservative Party? Party, party, party? Sun ripened warm tomato party? The beer lovers party? Oh, it's the BLP. The BLP sounds like something very dodgy, but it's not. The Friends of Beer Party, the Union of Conscientiously Workshy Elements. Um, there's a lot of uh, very fun, wacky parties out there. The Party of Donkeys, the best party in Iceland. I can't believe they didn't do well. No party to support. 
That's interesting that that's actually still going. Bill and Bet, you know, and you can see how most of them go to Funk because parties do have to register every year and maybe that tells you something about parties. Maybe it tells you more about parties that like, oh yeah, so many of these exist for so many weird things. Or maybe you think that the party party are the people we really should be voting for. I mean, what they want is they want a party. How do we not like this as a concept? And so yeah, what I'm saying right now is I'm making my own political party. And if you'd like to vote for me, please, please don't do it. Please, please vote for people you actually know. Or at the very least, this, actually not, this is turning into accidental politics of Toy Cat. You don't want to hear that. My, my pro tip was just going to be, if you don't want to vote for someone, go and vote and just spoil your ballot. Like, there you go. It's worse than voting for someone you believe in. But if you don't believe in anyone, then you get counted as like, ooh, against the system. And then people will be actively looking for you. Whereas if you don't show up, that could be because you don't care. Could be because you, you, you know, there's no way to work out intent from that. But you can get it from that. Okay, so at the end of the video here, I want to mention something which has uh, been on my mind for a while. Because if you, in, if if you watched this video and you enjoyed it, I appreciate you. I think uh, this video had some fun content, but the actual like presentation of it, it was basically like a slideshow, right? Like we just we just went for a bunch of images and pages and read them and like there's something to be said for that. I enjoy this style of video. I enjoy making it a bunch, but I also feel like in an age where like YouTube educational content can be seriously high value, I feel like Toy Cat scrolling around Google Maps or scrolling around the internet uh, has like limited utility. If you like this, I am very grateful for you, and I want to do better for you, which is why I would like to hire an editor. If you enjoyed this video, despite the fact that it sucked, and you have the ability to not make it suck, then I have a proposition for you, dear internet. And uh, that is, if you have any editing skills whatsoever, I would like to see how you can edit a video. So, link down below in the description, I hope. I'm going to leave the first... I don't know, like seven minutes of a video that I was recording earlier. Um, it's a video that I think has a really fun idea to it. Like, what if we, I, I've, I've got an idea for a video series. I'm related to the country balls. I'm related to geography of Toy Cat, but I want to make like an educational series talking about geopolitics and history in the way that I think makes most sense. You know, other maps, historical thing, you know, like things that can show that off best. And so if you would like to do that, I'll leave a link to just the audio down below. I guess I'll put it as a YouTube video. Um, and you can take any 60 second, 90 second uh, part of that that you like. Hey, there's Amazon Fresh. See, it vanishes when you zoom in though. Where is it really? But um, if you would like to, um, if you would like to, uh, you know, edit uh, up 60 to 90 seconds off that video, you can pick which 60 to 90 seconds you think you can do the best job with to really convince me why you're the editor for this channel. It is obviously going to be paid uh, work. Oh, I, I, this, this trial will be, uh, the selection process. If you are successful, send in an email, uh, unlist the video, like edit 60 to 90 seconds of the video down below, make it into a video, send it to me via email, ivx2cat at gmail.com, and uh, you know, then tell me what your rate is for a video. Um, because obviously, one of the things that's been prohibited off on this channel for so long is that the videos just don't make money. There's no way uh, it was going to go anywhere from there. But if we look right now at like some recent uh, videos like okay, here's a video that did pretty well and it's like oh how much did that one make? Ooh, we made a hundred dollars like and a hundred dollars means there's room for like, you know paying uh, For editing in there somewhere, you know uh, even even like a video that doesn't perform so well It's like okay, so we get like eighty three dollars and after taxes <laughs> that becomes like obviously a lot less than eighty three dollars but it means there's room to pay uh, you know, the the amount that it might take to make a well-edited educational style video. So if you uh, if you can get, give me your rate for an entire video, make a video about, uh, and make a video educational style about the thing linked down below, it's history, it's geopolitics, it's the seven decisions that made the United States um, so powerful slash the superpower of the world. And um, so if you would like to do that, let me know. And also give whatever credentials you can in your email. Like, are you into history and geopolitics? Do you just like Google Maps as well? Um, and we can we can try and work out something. I On this channel, I, I, I always like vary as to whether an editor is a good idea or not. And uh, I'd like to change my mind. Look how like fancy this this tube station is compared to like... I, I went to Ealing yesterday for the first time. I didn't realize just how well connected it was for no particularly good reason compared to like if you go like to the east. Here we go to like this station here, Wolfhamstow Central. It's actually a major train station, I bet. But like this, look how unnice it looks by comparison, I bet. I could be entirely wrong about this actually. Yeah, look how ugly it looks by comparison. Nah, it's a pretty nice station. You know, anyway, um, 
this this last little bit at the end here is just Toy Cat rambling as he says words. And isn't that the beauty of the internet? That you can ramble and say words with absolutely no consequences. But uh, if you sat through this and would like to edit, video down below. If you just want to watch it, because, you know, I, I was going to say, like, you know what, you're just going to spoil the video. If you want to watch 40% of a video, you can do that down below too. But if you don't want to watch 40% of a video, then you should you should leave now. This is this is the end. There's nothing interesting coming next. It was Toy Cat talks about political parties, then goes for a little bit of a, a drive through London. And if you don't like that, I don't know what to say. Anyway, thank you for watching this video, because I'll see you all next time. Goodbye.